Hello YouTubers, welcome to vlog number 8 and uh, anyways this here is going to be uh, the title for this one is going to be how to build your faith uh, anyways as uh, you're looking at the little clip there it's on this here book called uh, God's Answers for Your Life and this was given to me about a year or two ago by uh, Brother Thomas and it's filled with uh, Wow, some pretty amazing uh, scriptures and is organized uh, specifically for each kind of uh, situation that you may find yourself in and dealing with in specific uh, uh, that's to your uh, situation. But anyways, there's a, there's a small chapter of verses dealing with uh, faith and uh, considering some of the uh, clips that I've uh, listened to mp3s that I've listened to by uh, Zeph Daniel I, I thought that this would be a pretty good uh, concept and uh, idea to uh, go through some of these here uh, 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 verses that were uh, picked out from the Bible that's in this book and anyways I'm going to begin here now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which were or are seen were made not of things which do appear. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as he uh, seeing the him who is in, is invisible, and that's Hebrews uh, uh, 11 uh, verses 1, 3, 6, and 27. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, and that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might it be found on to praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom, though, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's First Peter chapter 1, verses 9-7. through 7. For therein is the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 If any of you lack wisdom, let a mask of God that giveth all to men liber liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not of, of, of a wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall be, receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That was James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. For with God nothing shall be impossible. That's Luke chapter 1, verse 37. He staggereth not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to also to perform. Romans chapter 4, verses 20 through 21. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that life also of Jesus might be made manifest in your body. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Okay. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 
chapter 8, verse 31. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of your Lord Jesus Christ in, unto eternal life. That was from Jude uh, 20 and 21. For we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and the portion, and my portion forever. Psalms uh, chapter 73, verses 25 and 26. Behold, I am of the Lord. Oh, sorry about that. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's from Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be the light unto me. That's from Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the, just but the just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk, I think that's how it's pronounced, chapter 2, verse 4. Or is it a Habab or Habakkuk, something like that. But anyways, we'll move on there, my friends. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. See thou how faith wrought with his works, by, and by works was faith made perfect. That's James chapter 2, verse 18 and 22. Be, uh, beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you to the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And that's from, uh, from Jude, as is uh, verse 3. And then we have this final, final uh, reading right here. But call to remember the former days, in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after we have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back in, unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And as from uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 and uh, 35 to 39. And, and that was the, kind of the, the wrap-up from this here little book on uh, how to build your faith. And now following will be some, uh, some uh, clips that I've taken from uh, Zeph Daniel's uh, MP3s. And... And uh, I guess in the, as time goes by, I'm going to probably uh, address some more of this here uh, situation as far as uh, uh, things relating to faith and faith building. And thank you for uh, stopping by. And to my dismay, it's sort of like, okay, well, you're stating the obvious. You might reel in a few people that are desperate to hear the latest horror story around the campfire about how bad it's going to be, about the alien invasion, 
about the fact that uh, uh, there's demons walking around now eating people because well, that's got a lot of play in the Christian, pseudo-Christian community. I call it pseudo because I don't believe these people have faith. They have faith in stories, in terrible stories, and then they say, repent. Well, you know, I know a lot of people who have repented. In other words, they quietly lead their lives in a godly manner, and, you know, they interact with the world, and they're not, they're not um, you know, they're trusting God to lead their steps, and, it's, and they're not making a big show of it, and they don't feel they need to tune into gloom and doom radio because they already know it's bad. In fact, I spoke to one guy the other day. He called me just for, to get some comfort because he was so horrified at the... That's between you and the maker, you and the father. It's not up to me to judge whether you're saved or not. You will know or if you are. I run into a lot of people who just don't know. One way of telling is when you start sharing the word of God, do you really get into it and do you, do you get all excited about it? Are you really excited to share the word or not? Now it also says in God's love that the spirit will also help in our infirmities. It doesn't say you won't have infirmities. It says the spirit will help. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself makes intercession for us. In other words, we may not know there's danger up ahead. We not, may not know there's a a tumor or something ready to kill us. We may not know a lot of things with our health, let's say. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows that in the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good for those that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. If you are in these affiliations, and your focus is completely on God and your love of God, and you share that with brothers and sisters, I don't see a problem with that. It's when you're asked to do things or affiliate in some way that shifts the focus, at not only with you, but also God's focus. That could not happen in a godly society. That could not happen with good people. Okay, people that are good would be at least beholden to their morals. Um, you know, this is kind of like in a, in a little bit of, of apologetics about what it means to serve God and what it means to serve the world. One litmus test you can take is, is there persecution? Are there places you can't go? Are there things that happen supernaturally when you go certain places that you shouldn't go that almost kill you, even though they're, you can't see it? Is there, are there dangers out there that you need to be avoiding and that the Spirit has to guide you away from? Dangers that weren't there before you serve God. If the answer is no, then you're not serving God. Period. If there isn't persecution and the rest of it, you know, there's just places you can't go. I mean, I remember we tried to go to a concert at one time in Colorado, and then all of a sudden they had to take the car to the mechanic, and then they started manifesting, and then weird vans started driving by. All kinds of weird, like almost like gang stalking type of events happened, but they were supernatural, you know, and then, you know, we had to um, escape it and we couldn't go to a concert because the way was blocked. And then we were sort of chased out of this area in Colorado and it just, you know, and we had to kind of take shelter, but we were, we had a real battle on our hands with, with suddenly just out of the blue, out of nowhere. Okay. Things like that, or even to a certain extent, you go to a rock concert, what happens? The whole point of it, if you're dealing with rock from, the, say, the 70s especially, is to the lyrics and the, and the whole uh, thing is to conjure up. It's a, it's a service. It's a religious service. To conjure up Satan and the demons to possess everyone in the concert and get everyone flowing in the same mind. And then programming takes place, hive mind programming. And then those people go home with those demons or whatever from the rock concert. And then they spread those throughout, you know, um, their lives. And the, the point of that is to get them under control, to get them in a form of bondage, to get them wearing the certain clothes, dressing a certain way, having a certain hairstyle, having a certain take on the world, having a certain way of being. 
You say, well, Paul, he was, he was in. He became a man of God. Well, the church is like him because, you know, he represents them. They're of the world, the 501c3 church, and they hope one day to be separate unto God and, and, and to be able to stand up against the force of humanity, which frightens them. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it shouldn't be frightening if you have God on your side. The, the humanity is nothing. And the force of humanity is irrelevant. And all their sorcerers and witchcraft and all their stuff can do nothing. Nothing. Won't, won't, won't touch a hair on your head unless he, he, he allows it. But that would be for his purpose. And, and, and it doesn't mean that he allows his people to live either. Oftentimes they'll take one of his out. Huh. Herod tried to take everybody out just to get Jesus. And then what happens? Herod goes down. What happens when they try to take you out? Have you ever looked back and seen the body count? They, they get taken out. I've seen people's careers ruined. Um, public humiliation. You know, scorn and you, you know, rejected by the group. I've seen this over and over again by people that did not heed the word or didn't heed a prophetic word given by those of us in this walk, whatever you want to call it, are prophetic. If we give a word and it's mocked, there will be action against that person. Legally, um, we have the right to speak the oracles of God. It's not an arrogant boast. This is just, you know, I know it sounds, it sounds like that, so that's why I have to say I realize how this may sound to someone in the world. I can see the labels now. Paranoid, antisocial, blah, 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 needs help. Let's get him a psychiatrist. You know what I mean? And that would be for anyone that speaks the way I'm speaking. I'm fully aware how it sounds, but in, it in no way diminishes the reality of the situation that this is literally true. As bizarre as it is to the shrinks who work for the, for the society uh, at large to assimilate it all, and now they're deciding to bring the gay ethos in, which is, um, gosh, show me something new. That's, that's usually the, uh, you know, the, the immorality. Um, and when I say the gay thing, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, relationship or trying to be, have gay be like marriage. I'm not, this whole uh, song and dance and, and circus really is pathetic, completely, utterly, incredibly stupid. On, they're the stupidest people on earth promoting all this stuff. It's unbelievable calling someone a sex act. I'm gay. Oh, you like anal sex. You are anal sex because you're gay. Uh, is that absurd? It's done for political purposes and it becomes another conformity thing. So the children will be taught you have to be gay or, um, you, you know, then you won't be assimilating and those who aren't, you, that's just based on purely physical, con, you know, conforming to, you know, when in Rome. Um, but the deeper thing is, is that the actual conformity to the world has to be in the spirit or else they get killed. That's another deep, dark, dirty secret. They can jump through the hoop and do everything that mom and dad tells them to do and, and get into the club all to, and to find out they have some accident or something happens or just, you know, the plane goes down, you know, the thing sinks or, you know, there's a hunting accident. You know, something like that ends up going on because that mission's been compromised and God has to bring them home. 